Hello everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. Welcome to another video. mRNA technology is all the rage among large segments of the medical establishment and scientific community who are banking on it for the future, no pun intended, for its potential in their view to cure more and more diseases. And I wanted to share with you this article, which was only recently published regarding the need for fine tuning of mRNA technology. Take a look at this. So here we have a piece published on the BBC website. Within the last few days, there was a study done. mRNA jabs could be fine tuned. The revolutionary messenger ribonucleic acid, that is mRNA technology, in some jabs given to millions of people, actually in most jabs, could be fine-tuned for even greater accuracy, UK scientists say. Genetic instructions in the jab could be tweaked to avoid a harmless tiny slip, sometimes seen as the body reads the code, the Medical Research Council team suggest. Existing mRNA shots are effective and safe, they say. Future ones could fight more diseases. The partly funded government study published in the journal Nature involved detailed lab work on the original Pfizer shot that three years ago became the first of its kind to be used to protect people in the pandemic. Safe and effective, that of course is the major mantra we have heard throughout the pandemic, or at least the last three years since we've had a jab. That is what the medical establishment says, that is what the mainstream media says over and over again. And as for the article in Nature, the link is down below. Feel free to check that out if you'd like to read the actual piece, but I am going to continue reading the article in the BBC here. By studying mice and then 21 volunteers who had received the jab, the researchers discovered about one in three people might experience the slip error. One of the biggest success stories in medicine, the mRNA shots, which include one made by Moderna, of course the other is Pfizer, they have protected millions of lives, the researchers say, and understanding and updating the science should help mRNA technology tackle more diseases, possibly even cancer in the future. But what do they mean by slip-ups? We're going to go into that in a moment. As for saving millions and millions of lives, that of course is something that many academics also believe. I would say, well, if you look at the whole world, billions of people in Africa and Asia where the pandemic also swept through, they didn't even use this type of technology yet. You can do your own research yourself as to how they have fared over the last few years. But let's carry on. mRNA jabs work by showing the body cells a bit of genetic code from the pandemic virus. This cannot cause infection, but teaches the body how to defend itself. The body reads and translates the code using its own cell machinery called ribosomes. The immune system then uses the instructions to make special protective proteins called antibodies that can fight disease. That's a recap on how this technology works. Let's carry on now. It is a translation process in the ribosomes that can go slightly wrong, the researchers say. The end result is still great protection, but there can be a few extra unintended proteins made too. A few extra unintended proteins. What exactly does that mean? Thankfully, these cause no physical issues, the researchers say, based on real life evidence from the millions of people, including teenagers and children, who have received the technology. Well, I'm not sure if that statement is based on actual data or them just drawing a conclusion. Translating the code is a bit like reading a sentence of three letter words, such as the cat ate the fat rat. The ribosome occasionally skips forward by a letter or place called a frame shift to read the cat, a T, F, A, T, R. Whoa, that is a big mistranslation there. And the researchers found a simple tweak to some of the code could eradicate these errors without affecting the desired end product, protection against a dangerous disease. Lead researcher from the University of Cambridge said research has shown beyond doubt that mRNA jabs are safe. Billions of doses of the Moderna and Pfizer mRNA technology have been safely delivered, saving lives worldwide. We need to ensure that mRNA jabs of the future are as reliable. And another expert weighs in here from the University of Leeds. It matters that we understand that these events are possible, but it by no means implies that the well-established population safety record for these jabs, which have been administered more than 13 billion times since 2021, should be questioned. Yes, that sounds very scientific indeed, doesn't it? Something shouldn't be questioned. Future mRNA jabs should use a slip-resistant coding, the researchers say, as it is scientifically possible some unintended proteins might be capable of triggering an unwanted immune response or side effect. Any treatment or jab can have possible risks or side effects, although not everybody experiences them. And then they list some mild 
Side effects here, a sore arm, feeling tired, a headache, feeling achy. And what did Pfizer have to say about this? Pfizer said, we welcome independent research and academic discourse to advance the science of mRNA technology. The pandemic provided the first opportunity for the use of mRNA platforms. We continue to advance mRNA research and together with the scientific community, explore new applications for this promising platform to help prevent and treat the spectrum of human disease. Well, that is very interesting indeed, that particular article. Lots of scientists now believe that this technology needs some fine tuning. And I would urge the following, and these would be my own thoughts. Number one, this piece highlights that many segments of the medical establishment and scientific community truly believe that mRNA technology is the future. Secondly, I've heard a lot of talk already about many existing jabs switching over to mRNA technology in the future, including flu jabs. And finally, I would urge that true scientific discourse occurs. And if we are going down the route of employing any technology which is going to be administered to lots of people, that we have open scientific discourse. We hear a variety of opinions, not just those quote unquote experts who are hand selected by the medical establishment and the mainstream media. Science is about open dialogue. Everybody must be able to talk openly and everybody must be able to ask questions, not what that scientist in the piece thought, that something should be above question. Nothing is above question in science. Thanks everyone for listening, Dr. Sunil Dand. Feel free to comment down below. Check out my academy and my coaching sessions down below. Also my free newsletter, that link is down below as well. Stay strong everyone, and we will talk again very soon.